To think that astrology would answer every question that you may ask in your earthly life would of course be naive. And to believe that it could would be gullible. But astrology is the map by which we can find our way through life's maze of crossroads. Man has looked to the heavens since his beginning and has never failed to find there the signposts of life. As when traveling from city to city, we are offered many alternate routes, a road map helps us find the most direct and safest route for us to follow. Astrology provides us through our horoscope with the road map of our life. Let us now view the map which leads us to the fortunes of Capricorn. Capricorn, the sea goat, is the tenth sign of the astrological zodiac, December 22nd to January 19th. As Capricorn, your planetary ruler is Saturn. Your sign is Earth. You are of a cardinal nature, steady, positive. As Capricorn, you claim a special place in the astrological zodiac. You are by far the truest of friends, the most helpful and giving, yet strongly realistic and practical. For you it is impossible to pass by someone in need of your assistance. You have the great personal courage that allows you to champion even unpopular causes. You are affectionate, and feel that love is a necessary part of practical medicine. This affectionate and giving quality is noticed by all around you, even if at first they do not understand the nature of their attraction to you. You are a perfectionist and seek constantly to improve upon yourself and the things which come under your control. You are strongly idealistic. Yet this is balanced by a realistic and logical outlook. You can accomplish many things that for others would be impossible. While they may be idealistic, they are not very realistic. And if they are realistic, they may not have a sensitivity to higher ideals.
farmers kept goats. They were wild, shaggy creatures who wandered over the mountains and rolled in the mud until their straggly beards were sticky with thistles and burdocks. Cadwallader, the goat keeper, decided to smarten up his goats by combing their beards. But the goats liked being scruffy, so they ran away, all apart from Gweno. Gweno loved having her beard combed till it was as smooth as silk. Oh, I love my Gweno's beard, said Cadwallader, as he wove it into plaits. The other goats brayed and grumbled, because they thought Gweno looked like one of those fancy new breeds. What were they called? Sheep. The other goats told Gweno that she ought to have a straggly beard, like a good goat. But one day, she vanished. And when she hadn't returned by twilight, Cadwallader went in search of her. He found her on a high, high ledge, high up in the mountains. Gweno, he shouted. Tidma, let me pluck your beard. But Gweno said nothing. Gweno, Tid, I will weave flowers into your beard. But Gweno was crying. Cadwallader to a stone to frighten her. But it frightened her and she slipped and tumbled down, down into the gorge. Cadwallader clambered down in search of her. He held her and laid her head in his lap. He stroked her beard and she licked his hand and as the moon rose he looked down and Gweno had turned into a young woman with a silky smooth beard. She spoke to him with such a sweet bleating voice she took his hand in her hoof and they climbed out of the gorge and there were all his goats, all of them pawing at the ground and snorting. When they saw Gwenna had turned into an ugly human. One big hairy billy goat pointed his horns and he charged at Cadwallader and butted him down, down, down into the gorge when Cadwallader hit, hit, hit the ground, he opened his eyes and looked around for Gweno, but there were no goats to be seen, only sheep as far as the eye could see. And that's why the wild goats that you see in Wales today avoid people.
They crashed through the door, danced round the tree, ate all the food, drank all the drink and were about to look for more when one of the little trolls spotted the white bear asleep under the stove. Hey, Halvor has a pussy cat. Here, pussy, have a person. And it shoved a half-eaten sausage on a fork under the bear's nose. The white bear grumbled about being woken, growled, stood up, opened her mouth full of sharp white teeth and bit the troll on the bottom. The little troll looked surprised, then burst into tears and ran to its parents, crying like a child who's been told she can't watch any more TV. The biggest troll stood in front of the white bear like a stone oozing pondweed and slime and stared through sorcery eyes, dewdrops tricking through his long poker nose, and he sang. They call me Troll, Noah of the Moon, Giant of the Gale Blast, Curse of the Rain Hall, Companion of the Sibyl, Night's Roaming Hag, Swallower of the Heavens. For what is a troll? bear laughed. That's from Snoddy Sturluson, back when you trolls were noble people. Now look at you, you're overweight, you smell of rancid ditch water and you're forced to hide away on the bridges. The biggest troll realised this pussycat was stronger and smarter than he was and she had very sharp teeth and even sharper claws and every Everything was about to go wrong because it always did because he was a troll. 
so he sat down by the hearth and he said, May I tell you a story, Miss Pussycat? We were happy until one day, Tree Bukana Brusa, three billy goats, big as mountains with horns the size of moose antlers, tried to cross the bridge and take our fields. So I thought very hard and I had an idea. I'd never had an idea before, but it was a cunning idea. I hid in the ditch beneath the bridge and waited. Trip, trap, trip, said the bridge. Who's that tramping over my bridge? I roared from under the bridge. Dead Minster Brook and Rooster, said the little goat. He wasn't little. He was the size of a hill. Go away or I'll eat you, I said. I'm too little to eat, said the billy goat. I want the green grass over on the other side of the bridge. That's my troll grass for you, Lukaku, I said. But the little billy goat trip trapped over the bridge, so I ate him up. Trip, trap, trip, said the bridge. Who's that tramping over my bridge, I growled. Den me lomster buchen This goat was the size of a fjell. Go away or I'll eat you like I ate the little billy goat, I said. Now I'm too old and tough to eat, said the billy goat. I want all the grass in the field over there. That's my troll grass, I said. The little middle billy goat trip-trapped over the bridge. So I gobbled him up too. Trip, trap, creak. Trip, trap, creak, groaned the bridge. Who's that creaking over my bridge? I trumped. Den store book and blue, sir. This one was big as a mountain. Go away or I'll gobble you up, I said. I eat trolls for breakfast, said the biggest billy goat. I'm the go goat, the greatest goat of all time. And I want all the grass on the Dub de Fjell. And he pulled the ground, pointed his horns, and he charged, chanting, I have two spears to poke your eyeballs out your ears, and I have two curling horns to crush the marrow from your bones. Next thing I remember was flying through the air thinking, oh, not again. And then I landed in the ditch, bones crushed, belly squashed, covered from head to toes in rancid ditch water. From that day, trolls had to leave our homeland and live in the ditches on the Dublin Fjell, while the goats ate all our grass. Snip snap, this tale is done. The bear slawed in the warmth of the fire, so the trolls tiptoed out of Halvor's house with trolley bags full of leftover food so they could continue their Christmas party in the rancid ditch on the Dubrafia. When Halvor came home after visiting his sister, he found his cottage untrashed. So he cooked the bear some porridge and sausages and invited her to stay with him. Next Christmas Eve, Halvor was in the forest cutting wood when a voice spoke. Halvor? He looked round, and there was the biggest of the big smelly trolls trying to hide behind a tree. Um, have you still got your scary white pussycat? Yes, she's waiting for you at home by the stove to tell her a story, said Halvor, and she now has seven kittens who are even bigger than she is. The troll lumbered back to his rancid ditch to fetch his family and they celebrated Christmas at Haldor's house with his pussycats 
and he told the story of Carrie Trestak, who wore a wooden cloak and cured three trolls who gave her golden, silver and copper leaves and apples from the forest. And they all sang, When the troll mother has put her eleven little trolls to bed and tied their tails together, she sings softly for her eleven little trolls with the most beautiful words she knows. And all this happened a long time ago, and the trolls are still sat in their rancid ditch water on the Dovrath Hill, forever looking forward to June Christmas. Snip snap, my tail is done. Thank you.